Hello and welcome to today's flight. Today is July 30th, 2021, and we're going to talk about VOR equipment checks for IFR operations. I just performed one yesterday, and so I'm going to show you a video of that operation. We're going to talk a little bit about the CFR and how it applies to VOR equipment checks. Okay, here's the relevant uh, section 14 CFR 91.171 and uh, as it applies to VOR equipment checks for, for IFR operations. So uh, the first thing we want to point out here is that you can't operate uh, under IFR using the VOR system unless it's been uh, checked again against one of these systems within the last 30 days. The first, of course, is you can take it to a shop and it's going to cost you money and they'll inspect it and uh, they'll sign off on it. Uh, the other is uh, you do it yourself. And you have several options of doing that. You can do it on the ground or you can do it in the air. Now, the focus of this video is going to be a, a ground check at a designated uh, VOR check station. Uh, and, and I did that yesterday at uh, Olympia Regional Airport. So that's going to be the focus of the video. But you can do a couple of different things. You can go to uh, one of the airports that has a, a VOR test signal. There aren't very many of them, as I'll point out here in a little bit. Um, and that would be one option. The nearest one here to me is Seattle Tacoma International, which isn't very convenient. And the other is you can go to a airport that has an, a, a VOR system checkpoint right here, VOR system checkpoint. And uh, again, the nearest one here to me is Olympia Regional Airport. And, and that's what I did yesterday. Now, if no surface checkpoints available, the FAA also has uh, designated airborne checkpoints. And if you uh, identify one of those and fly over it, you can be within plus or minus six degrees of the designated radial for that checkpoint. You can also do uh, one where you select a radial along the center line of an established airway, pick a ground point along that, and they say you should be at least preferably 20 nautical miles. The keyword here is preferably. It can be closer or further. And then you maneuver the aircraft over that point, and, uh, and then you note the VOR bearing indicated uh, by your instruments, and you, you have a tolerance there of 6 degrees. Or, if you have two VORs, you can tune them both to the same radial, and as long as they are within four degrees of each other, you're good there, and then you have to log it. We'll talk a little bit about that, too. So, again, lots of options, both on the ground and in the air. Okay, so where do I find a VOR test facility or a VOR check facility? And if you go to uh, whatever cert browser you use, um, put in FAA Chart Supplement, and uh, do a search on that, and this is what should come up, uh, digital chart supplements right here, and then we're going to go ahead and do the supplement search, clicking right here, and pick your state, in this case it's Washington State, and uh, that's going to bring up a page like this with all the airports in the state. I'm just going to click right here on Northwest. All I want to see right now is the Northwest chart supplement, and uh, everything Northwest is going to come up here, then you're going to go to uh, search, it's basically a PDF, and then put VOR receiver in the search field, and you should have a bunch of a bunch of uh, replies to that query, and it's going to show all the uh, test facilities, receiver or checkpoints in your state. So let's see, going through here, Montana. That um, yeah. So here's here's Washington State. Let's go ahead and blow that up. All right, so you can see that there are uh, VOR test facilities uh, here, just uh, Seattle Boeing Field, Seattle Tacoma International, and Spokane. Those are the VOR test facilities. Again, that's not really practical. It's tough for me as a GA airplane to get into Seattle Tacoma. But there's a bunch of receiver checkpoints. If you look here, Moses Lake Olympia, which is the one I used yesterday, Payne Field, Pasco, Walla Walla, and Wenatchee. So the focus is going to be on this one right here. And it's going to tell you the checkpoint uh, description, where to find it. So east run-up area, uh, runway 17. It tells you the azimuth from the facility in the distance, 0.3 miles. 350 is the az azimuth from. And then the frequency that you tune to right here. So again, that's, that's how to find you know, where these VOR receiver checkpoints are. And here we are arriving at Olympia Regional Airport. On the downside, if you don't have a VOR receiver check uh, station at your airport, is you do have to fly to a different airport. I went ahead and turned this into a training opportunity. I went ahead and flew the uh, practice VOR 
runway 35 approach and uh, uh, flew the DME arc. So again, I used it as a training opportunity. And uh, here I am taxiing over to the VOR check station, which is at the end of runway 17, as I mentioned earlier. And there's a couple of signs indicating uh, the frequency, the azimuth. And then here's the spot on the runway where I'm gonna park. And then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and cut here in a minute to the video that I took inside the airplane showing the VORs and uh, tuning them to the appropriate frequency and radial. And here's a close-up of the VOR check course signs indicating the appropriate radial and frequency and distance from the station. And now we're tuning the Omni bearing selector on VOR number one to center the needle and see how far off we are from the 350 radial designation. And there we have center deflection and we're showing about 353 degrees, which is in the allowable four degree tolerance. Now we're going over to VOR number two and you can see 350, we have a slight deflection. So we're gonna turn the Omni bearing selector to get a center deflection on VOR number two. And there we end up with about 348 and with all said and done, VOR number one is showing 353, and VOR number two is showing 348, each within the four degree tolerance prescribed in the 14 CFR. And finally, the last part of the relevant CFR indicates that once you've done your check specified as uh, we discussed, you have to enter the date, the place, the bearing error, and then you have to sign the aircraft log or whatever record you use. And uh, if the test signal was done by a repair station, they're going to have to make uh, similar entries for you. And here's an example of a VOR equipment check log. This one I just pulled off the internet. There's uh, tons of them out there. So this one, you just put the date, the location, the facility, and then you indicate whichever number up here corresponds with the type of check that you did. In this, in this case, it's gonna be a designated point on the ground. So item number two for type check, and then the bearing error for VOR number one, in our case was three degrees, VOR number two was two degrees, and then you sign it right here. And that would just keep that in the airplane along with all the other required documents. Of course, your end number of your airplane is going to go up here. And that concludes our video on VOR ground check. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you found something useful. As always, thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again next flight.